HCC 788 supports Girls of the Finest, a G.I. Joe costume club. Be sure to order their 2017 calendar. Proceeds to benefit the charity Canines for Warriors. Find them on Indiegogo.com. Everybody, Hoodie Cobra Commander 788 here. It's time for another vintage G.I. Joe toy review, and I promised to look at more Joes from the 90s, and I've got to follow through with that promise. I know, we all just want the sugar, but we also got to take our medicine. And this week, our medicine comes in the form of this orange freak the ice cream soldier. Look at him. I said, look at him. Don't look away. Can you believe this guy? Whoa. What was I'm in hell! How did I get here? Why am I here? Beelzebub! You look a lot different than I expected. Oops, I flushed the wrong side of the screen again, didn't I? Just the fact that you exist raises so many philosophical questions. I just have to ask. Reverse flash! Ah! Oh. What the hell? What literally the hell? Oh, oh, wait, wait, no, 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 no. Don't don't flush the action figure. Don't don't flush the action figure to hell. I haven't reviewed it yet. Let let me review the figure first. Please, please, don't take it. Don't take it yet. I better get this review done while I still can. HCC 788 presents Ice Cream Soldier. This is Ice Cream Soldier, G.I. Joe's Flamethrower Commando from 1994. You heard that right. Hasbro executives intentionally named this figure Ice Cream Soldier. Now, as your mind is racing to imagine what this figure has to do with ice cream, I'm going to spoil it for you. Nothing. This figure has nothing to do with ice cream. It doesn't really have anything to do with soldiering either. The name Ice Cream Soldier is probably taken from a character in the Sergeant Rock comic books by the legendary comic book artist Joe Kubert. There was a character in those comics called Ice Cream Soldier, named for his ability to keep cool under pressure. The character first appeared in the comic Our Army at War in 1959. Sergeant Rock was a much more serious war comic book than G.I. Joe, so it's hard to criticize it for using a silly name. The explanation for the name makes more sense in the Sergeant Rock comic, but here's my problem with it. It's still a stupid name whether it appears in Sergeant Rock or G.I. Joe, and G.I. Joe takes the stupid name and turns the stupid up to 11. This figure was only available in 1994. It could only be available in 1994 because 1994 was the final year of the vintage G.I. Joe line. That's right, folks. Anything after 1994 is nostalgia. 90 is when the line died, and this is just one bright orange nail in its coffin. There are no other versions of Ice Cream Soldier, nor should there ever be. I have the full card back for this guy, so let's look at the packaging. On the packaging, instead of having the classic G.I. Joe explosion background, we have lasers. We have some, frankly, subpar card art. G.I. Joe card art used to be amazing and inspirational. This artwork, you could just imagine from any toy. Toy line. I mean, just cover up the G.I. Joe, and this card art would be average for some other toy line. And average is not good enough for G.I. Joe. There's a variant of this card. Some cards, instead of having the G.I. Joe logo up at the top, they have it along the side. And those cards also have the file card shrunk down smaller. We'll look at the file card later. Ice Cream Soldier is a part of Battle Core. Now, imagine for a moment, you are a kid in 1994, and imagine I'm your dad. First of all, I'm a great dad, and you love me, and you ask me, your father, to buy the Ice Cream Soldier for you. And I look at this, and I see Battle Corps, and I ask you, son or daughter, what is Battle Corps? Examine this card and explain to me what Battle Corps is. There's nothing on the front of the card that explains what Battle Corps is, so maybe on the back of the card, oh, here it is. It says, more G.I. Joe and Cobra recruits join the Battle Corps team. Uh, 
That doesn't explain what it is! Why are G.I. Joe and Cobra recruits joining Battle Corps? Are they fighting a common enemy? Are they fighting on the same side? And what is Battle Corps? As far as I can tell, Battle Corps is just the core G.I. Joe toy line, distinguished from all the subgroups available at the time. In 1994, they were selling G.I. Joe Star Brigade, uh, Shadow Ninjas. In 1993, they had Mega Marines, they had Ninja Force, they had Street Fighter II. I think it's pretty sad when your toy line gets so watered down that you have to put a label on the main part of the toy line and then on the packaging you don't even explain what that label means. Let's talk about Ice Cream Soldier's accessories. A lot of his accessories came on an accessories tree uh, and that's the same with a lot of 90s G.I. Joe. You guys already know I'm not a big fan of these accessories trees so I'm gonna just chuck this aside and not give it any more attention. He has far more accessories than he can carry which annoys me. More accessories do not equal better accessories. He came with a pistol and this may be a new accessory. I can't find any pre-1994 issue of this particular pistol. Uh, so this may be a unique pistol to Ice Cream Soldier, and I like it. It's not a bad pistol. This would be a good pistol to give to a different action figure. He came with a machete, and this is a copy of the machete that came with the 1988 Spearhead. If you want to call this a machete, this is much more ornate than your typical machete. He came with a submachine gun, and this is a copy of the submachine gun that came with the 1986 Beachhead. Here's the Beachhead submachine gun next to the Ice Cream Soldier copy so you can see the color difference. He came with a flamethrower and this is one of his flamethrowers. He has another one. We'll talk about that in a minute. This is a copy of the flamethrower that came with the 1988 Charbroil. He came with a figure stand and these figure stands are always the best accessories for these 90s Joes. I'm a big fan of these. And on the accessories tree he came with two missiles that worked with his spring-loaded weapon. Finally, we get to the big gun. His file card calls this a missile launcher with flamethrower attachment. So this is his second flamethrower. Because of course you want an open flame near explosives. That's a good idea. There's a loop here on the top that you're intended to put the action figure's arm through and there's a grip. But the grip does not fit in the figure's hand and it's really not very easy to get the figure's arm in and out of that loop. Here's a closer look at that missile launcher slash flamethrower and it does have some nice detail on it. I'll give it that. It is, of course, oversized and not based on any real-world weapon. You load the launcher by putting the missile in notch side down, and I'm trying to do this in a way that doesn't look suggestive. This is a family show. Push it back until it clicks, and it's loaded and ready to fire. This yellow trigger on the bottom of the launcher fires the missile. Just pull it back, and the missile is pretty powerful. Powerful. Caution, do not aim weapon at eyes or face. Let's look at his articulation. He had the articulation that had become standard by 1985. They did not ruin his articulation, so at least he has that going for him. I can't say that of every 90s figure. He could turn his head from left to right and look up and down. He could swing his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. Uh, he had a hinge at the elbow, so he could move at the elbow about 90 degrees. He had a swivel at the bicep, so he could swivel his arm all the way around. Uh, the figure was held together with a rubber o-ring that looped around the inside. That allowed him to move at the torso a little bit. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could move his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and he could bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's look at the sculpt design and color of Ice Cream Soldier and yeah we gotta. Let's start with his head and oh my goodness look at this goofy ass helmet. It is a bright orange helmet with huge goofy looking goggles. I have a problem with this. These goggles look goofy and there are reasons for that and the reason go beyond just G.I. Joe. They look goofy because of how human beings perceive faces. If an eye covering covers mainly just the eyes, we call them goggles. If it covers the whole face, we call it a faceplate. And the shape is important because we see goggles as eyes and we see faceplates as faces. If the eye covering is a long, narrow strip like this, it mimics the eyes of a predator with its narrow, focused gaze. Goggles like this can be fierce-looking because it reminds us of a predator hunting its prey. A faceplate that completely obscures the face makes a person's face totally expressionless. This can be scary because an enemy with a faceplate betrays no emotion, no remorse, and no mercy through facial expression. Sometimes you can have bows, like the Cobra Battle Android Trooper, which cleverly combines predator eyes with a vertical faceplate. You can have goggles that are neutral, like Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes' goggles mainly just cover his 
eyes. Now, Snake Eyes has a faceplate too, and it serves that purpose, but his goggles are not especially predator-like. You can have goggles that are like large, unblinking eyes that gaze into your soul, like Darth Vader. Keeping all that in mind, look at Ice Cream Soldier. He has huge goggles, and they are the opposite of predator eyes. They run way down his face like big, sad cow eyes. His eye coverings are not big enough to be a faceplate. No, that would be cool. Instead, they had to put this big orange nose right in the middle, so they couldn't be mistaken for anything but goggles. He looks like one of those pigs from Angry Birds. Wow, that is way more time than I wanted to spend looking at Ice Cream Soldier's head, so let's move on. Now let's look at his chest. He has a bright orange uniform. He has pointed shoulder pads. It looks like Riff Raff from Rocky Horror. He has crisscross straps that could be used for a backpack, but he doesn't come with a backpack. Those straps are in a very bright yellow color because the orange hadn't completely burned out your retinas, and they wanted to finish the job. He has a black collar and three black grenades because why not? His arms are orange, and on his right arm he has this big bulge here. I have no idea why it's not on his left arm. He has bright yellow gloves. On his waist he has a black belt with minimal detail, and we have more orange. On his legs we have more orange, and we have these yellow rings that look like he stole them from the Michelin Man. He has bright yellow boots, and on his right boot it looks like he has a knife, and these boots are actually pretty cool. I like these boots. I mean, they're not cool in this color, and they're not cool on this action figure, but if you were to take these boots and give them a different color and put them on a better action figure, you might have something. But Hasbro found a way to ruin even that. These boots are made of unpainted yellow plastic, and they did not bother to paint the hinges at the knee joint. So those knee joints are really obvious, and that just looks really cheap and bad. There's no ignoring the fact that this figure is made of bright orange and bright yellow, vomit-inducing colors, and completely inappropriate for any soldier, let alone a flamethrower. This isn't the only time G.I. Joe did this. Way back in 1984, they put their flamethrower, Blowtorch, in yellow and red. You may try to come up with a good in-universe reason for this, but I wish you wouldn't, because there is no good reason for this. Before you start making excuses for the flamethrowers wearing bright colors, let's take a look at real military flamethrower operators and see how they dressed and see if they felt the need to wear bright colors like this. What a surprise! They didn't wear bright colors. They wore subdued colors like any other soldier because they wanted to be camouflaged like everyone else. All right, let's look at the file card. Oh God, the file card. We have a portrait of Ice Cream Soldier. We have a diagram of Ice Cream Soldier with some features pointed out, and I do not care about these at all. Code name Ice Cream Soldier. He's the flamethrower commando, whatever that means. File name is Tom Henry Reagan, primary military specialty, fire operations expert, secondary military specialty barbecue chef Shut up. Birthplace is Providence, Rhode Island, of course. Early G.I. Joe file cards were written by Larry Hama, who was also the writer of the G.I. Joe comic book, and they were great. They had depth, they had character, so of course Hasbro thought, we gotta do away with that. At some point, some Hasbro executive decided, how hard can it be? We can do that ourselves. You can tell the difference, because immediately the file cards lost all of their depth and all of their character. Another thing they did was make a lot of G.I. Joe characters from Rhode Island. Hasbro headquarters is in Rhode Island. So rather than be imaginative, they made just a bunch of G.I. Joe figures that were hometown boys. It gets worse. We have a quote. It says, eating ice cream without hot fudge is like fighting without ammunition. Is it? Is that what it's like? Let's test that. Let's send some soldiers out into combat without ammunition and see if they come back and say, yep, it's like eating ice cream without hot fudge. This paragraph says, the last thing you would expect from G.I. Joe's fiercest flamethrower commando is for him to be called Ice Cream Soldier. Well, that's true. However, it's a perfect cover for him because when Cobra hears the Joes are sending a guy into battle with a code name like that, they don't expect much more than a sweet-toothed kid with chocolate ice cream stains splattered on his fatigue. 
beings. As ridiculous as that sounds, that would actually make slightly more sense than the ice cream soldier we got. Cobra's perceptions of him change fast when they see ice cream soldier fire up his supercharged flamethrower and blast 75 foot streams of flaming gasoline into their foxholes and munitions dumps. Talk about a firefight. Now don't tell me what to do. The ice cream soldier is a one man inferno who scorches those slimy snakes until they melt like hot fudge on a summer sidewalk. What they're saying is they know the name is stupid. It's intentionally stupid to cover how fierce he is. They're treating the stupid name like a feature rather than a flaw. General Hawk, here's the file on the new ice cream soldier. An ice cream soldier. You found one. Let's talk about Ice Cream Soldier's appearances in G.I. Joe media. That's easy. He didn't have any. He made no animated appearances, and if he ever made it into the comic book, I can't find a reference for it. So what do I think of this figure overall? There's only one thing left to do, and one fate this action figure deserves. Oh, Dark One, I summon you to place your icy fingers on this abomination and banish it to hell. magic and it's growing all the time a new adventure waits for us each day